Hello, this is Philosophy Quote of the Week, sponsored by Philosophy Now magazine. I'm Anja, and here is our quote. Individuals have rights so strong and far-reaching that they raise the question of what, if anything, the state and its officials may do. Robert Nozick, Anarchy, State and Utopia Robert Nozick's classic of political philosophy bears the most intriguing title. What does anarchy, state and utopia mean? The key to understanding Nozick's ideas lies in the opening statement of the book, our quote. Nozick starts off by asserting that individuals have extensive rights. These are rights that are not legal rights conferred by a particular political dispensation. Rather, they are natural rights. Rights that all human beings possess simply by virtue of being human. They are based on the idea of self-ownership, the fact that each human being belongs to no one but herself. These rights precede and outrank any political obligations. They ought to be respected and protected. However, living in a community with others, by its very nature, means making compromises. Political community, the formation of a state, confers privileges, affords protections, but also imposes duties. To what degree is it justified to limit the rights of individuals for the sake of politics? Would the prevalence of individual rights not suggest that the only acceptable state of affairs is anarchy, the absence of political power interfering with individuals' rights? Nozick arrives at the idea of a minimal state and examines the utopian path to getting there. The minimal state is legitimized only by the fact that it restricts itself to the protection of some core rights against force. The state must protect the individual's rights against aggression, which seems fair enough, but also rights not to be forced to make sacrifices for the benefits of others, as well as rights not to be forced to do things for the benefit of oneself. So, this quote can help us think about the trade-off between individual liberty and rights against the needs of the community. Is it ever okay for the state to impose taxes for redistribution to tell us how to live or educate our children? If so, to what degree can the state interfere in our lives? Where are the limits?